Hi there guys, it's uh, Neil here. Thanks for uh, watching the demo video and thanks for downloading the 6 minute walk test app. So let's try to do a quick overview um, of how this app works. Um, Alright, so let's do an example like I do in previous versions of a male client who is um, attending cardiac rehab and it's his uh, initial assessment. Okay, so we'll click on the male client. Now these are the steps here that you'll go through to actually submit a report and you actually don't need you know your stopwatch you know your calculator to to calculate all these things so it's all built in for you the only things you'll need for the six minute walk test is probably the cones and um, that's about it really yeah and if you need a spinny wheel for the uh, measuring of the meters yeah bring that along too but everything is pretty much here so let's have a look all right now this is your baseline observations so oxygen heart rate blood pressure um, your Borg scale ratings here for fatigue shortness of breath rate of perceived exertion and like in previous versions I've got all the um, Borg scales included now I know these back buttons look a bit funny, um, there being two, but I'll explain that when we get to the iPad interface. Okay, so let's go back. You can press either back button, it'll come back, you know, to wherever you were. All right, so, and you've also got your blood glucose level here if needed. Okay, so looking at this first page, um, you've got the dots, which indicate which um, step you're on or which page you're on. I can't swipe back because there's no pages, I can swipe to the next page, alright, alright, now the cog is your stopwatch, now we don't need that just yet, so I'll go back, and as you can have noticed maybe is this menu down here, the main and the about menu, so if I touch the screen without touching on the, you know, um, text boxes here the menu can be enabled and disabled and if you click on a text box obviously the um, keyboard is going to come up alright so you've done your vital signs let's go to the next page so this is where you do your biometrics so you've you know measured their um, height weight and age okay um, and this is your um, predicted distance calculator, which you can do the on right formula and the Jenkins formula. Um, if you don't know what those are, you probably shouldn't be doing a walk test, but um, I've got a little bit of a spiel on my website, which is in the about menu as well. Okay, so you've got your age calculator. The reason why I put a shortcut to your age calculator over there is because I'm really bad at calculating ages. So I've, you know, measured my client's height, the weight, and, you know, I could just ask, so, you know, how old are you? Um, but a really nifty tool is you can put in the client's date of birth, calculate the age very accurately, and then transfer how old this client is, um, depending whether they're the male or the female. So if I pressed male, it would transfer that age back to this distance here, the formula over here. Okay, and then when I'd get the full answer of the predicted distance, um, I would transfer this to the initial assessment. Okay, so let's swipe onto the next page. Okay, this is where we do our client distance um, calculation. We've just done the vital signs, we've done the predicted distance, this is the client distance. So this is um, where we can calculate that. So you'd put in, you know, you can pre put in your length of track. All right, and while you can either, you know, put in the number of laps they do, but I find that if you bring up the stopwatch and add the laps as you go, and when you press on the add lap button, which is this button over here on the device, the device should vibrate, which should notify you that, you know, you're adding the laps. So there you go. Press it four times and it's up to number four and then you'd calculate that. That's a really poor walk test, by the way. And 
um, you can press um, the partial lap here. If they stop in the middle of your track and they only do 15 meters out of how many meters your track is, if you use the plus button to add the distance, it'll add that onto there. Great. Okay, and then you'd add that to the initial assessment. So you now have your vital signs, your um, predicted distance, and now your client's distance as well. So I'll just clear all that. Now, you're probably swiping between this page, the next page, and also the timer while you're doing the six minute walk test. But what you can do is pre fill in those uh, the length of track in here and the you know when the clients finish you can add the partial app in here like I did before alright and you'll be swiping between that and the vital signs page and also using your stopwatch so you'd say okay Mr. Smith you can start and you know you can add the laps like so you can go back you can swipe between there if you needed to calculate all that but usually you just go timer back to the vital signs page disable that menu by clicking yep and then you fill in your vital signs here for the six minutes so you'd be checking okay is it a minute gone over yet nope go back alright that's alright so if your minute hasn't gone over and you're still counting your laps that's fine alright so once you've filled in your six minutes there you can scroll all the way down as well and then you have your recovery here as well your seventh to the eleventh minute as per the ATS guidelines alright so that's all done so, um, now you swipe over to the next page which is you know how breathless they were how fatigued they feel and also how they rated that um, as an exercise so just like as we did in the baseline observations you can do that here as well. Okay, now let's swipe to the next. And this is the client distance. So once we've added all that and transferred to the initial assessment, they would usually appear over here. And then you press calculate, and then you would have your percentage of your predicted distance. And remembering that it's a male client and it's his initial assessment, we wouldn't really need to do anything else other than submit the report. So we can skip through the mail exit, which is the exit assessment, and skip through the changes. You would only use these at an ex exit assessment, so um, yeah, I'll go through those after I go through the initial report here. So you've done your initial assessment and everything. Let's go to the initial report, and then we would get all the mail data that we had just worked so hard on and put all that through the phone and then you'd complete this form you know so all the blank data you'd fill in like we haven't done the waste there and um, usually you know this top bit here isn't filled in either you can put in some comments if you wish and you put your name in which is required and also your email address which is required and definitely the client's name which is required but if you are concerned about security, confidentiality, privacy, you know, paranoid about the World Wide Web and information, just put in an alias like Patient Zero, Patient Monday, Patient Tuesday, whatever. Uh, the report will actually automatically have the time and uh, the date, actually not the time, the date on the report. So you'd, you could do that as well if you wanted to. Okay, so once you fill that all in, you'd scroll down. Oops, I've just... The simulator is a bit touchy. So you'd scroll down and you've got your name, the email address, and you'd submit the report. Okay. And then you'd check your email and find your report there as well. Okay, now going back to the exit uh, assessment. So let's say you know you go through all your steps and it's the exit assessment. So if it's the exit assessment, you would fill in the initial assessment as well 
you'd have it in the chart, all the data there. You'd have everything here when you transferred it over to the exit assessment. Now the changes calculate changes between the initial assessment and the exit assessment. Okay, so those figures are very dependent on this and this being filled out. Okay, but you don't need it when obviously you're doing an initial assessment because you haven't done an exit, exit assessment yet. Okay, if that hasn't confused you yet, you know, I don't know what will. Now, moving on, this is a really new feature. Um, you can check your status of your internet connection. So, the reason why that is is because you need an internet connection to send your reports. Now, in previous versions of my app, I didn't have this ability, so this is really, really quite cool now. You can check it and it'll say, well, connection type Wi Fi, which is pretty cool. So, as you can tell, I'm on my computer here and it's the simulator, so it can actually detect that I'm using on Wi-Fi which is pretty cool so that's about it uh, for the iPhone demo the iPad is very very similar and a lot easier as well and I'll show you why I've got two back buttons as well for the um, iPad okay so I'm gonna stop this build I'm gonna do a demo in the iPad not a full demo, just to show you a few little things here. Okay, so in portrait mode, it would usually load like that. And you've got your menu just like you did in your iPhone as well, so that hasn't changed. And when you switch to landscape, it actually fixes that menu onto the side here. Okay, so it has that split screen view, which is uh, very iPad-like. Alright, now the reason why I have those two back buttons is because, let's go back to the mail pre-assessment and let's bring in, let's easier on the eyes there, let's bring in a Borg scale. Now as you can see here, the back button over here is fine, but the back button on this side is missing because of the menu button over here which is why I have put two back buttons okay so because in the iPad um, it covers it up with this menu button okay so if I didn't have the back button over there as well I wouldn't have I'd have to go back through this menu and which is a little bit of a pain in the bum so you've got the back menu there which is great so you can still swipe through just like it is a little bit expanded but you can that helps when you've got the vital signs table there you've got your stopwatch still there you can go back everything is exactly the same just a little bit different with the user interface you know okay um, there for the iPad but uh, that's about it guys so I'd really love for you guys to in the about menu uh, you can go to developer and that's my email and also you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I've got my website there which explains, well not really explains but it has a few more features and explains a little bit more <laughs> about the 6 minute walk test app. I've got my email there again, hint hint, if you uh, need to f give me any feedback and if this wasn't already a big hint being the uh, one of the few yellow buttons I'd really love for you guys to write a review. So if you click on that button on your device, it should um, have a link there to write a review about my app. But I'd really love to hear from you guys. Um, thanks for watching. Enjoy the app. And peace.